our second line in the deep, dark, endless galaxy hole, and things are gonna get confusing. There's a shock, I know. These are the galaxy fighters. <laughs> Yes, not Galaxy Warriors, Galaxy Fighters. I trust you see the vast difference there. This logo is so exact to the Galaxy Warriors one, you'd almost think these had to be part of the same line, which I'm sure was the intent. There's some things to the Galaxy Fighters line that would just make more sense if they had been made by Sungold under a different name, but there's also things to it that seem to point towards that not being the case. What I have here are all 12 of the Galaxy Fighters. Well, with a little asterisk by one of them, and I'll explain in a bit. It's also kind of interesting that in the end there were 12 Galaxy Fighters where there were 12 Galaxy Warriors in their regular line as well. Or that's not interesting. Whatever, I thought I'd tell you anyway. Now, there were some things that were actually far more consistent on Galaxy Fighters versus Galaxy Warriors, where some things were far less consistent. One of the things that was actually consistent on the Galaxy Fighters was the accessories they would come with. Now, not all my Galaxy Fighters have the exact right accessories they should come with, but when they were packaged, they would always come with the same stuff even from version to version of the cards. Of which there were many more than the Galaxy Warriors. Now, I guess what I'd say I have here is a version 1.5 card and a version 2. The first run cards, much like the Galaxy Warriors ones, actually have the name of the character on the front, but it was right above the figures on these. Which is also exactly how the confusing tie-in Swords and Sorcerers cards were laid out, which also featured the same artwork which is on these early Galaxy Fighter cards. This artwork is also very similar to the Frazetta-inspired one on the Galaxy Warrior cards. It looks to be the same guy, just at a different angle, but now he's fighting some serpent creature and has a sword. So, yeah, the overall design of these looks very much like a Galaxy Warriors card, and even has almost the exact same purple lines at the top. The first run cards also all have the distributor's stamp on them, Madison. According to the card, these guys were based out of Hackensack, New Jersey, so it's not a surprise that the US is one of the places you'll most likely encounter these figures. The other version of the purple card, which does not feature the character's name on the front, was instead stamped by the manufacturer, Suco. This seems to be what you'll find them like outside of North America, as the one I got like this came from the Netherlands. Though there was actually a specific version of the cards made for France, which gave them the French name Le Guerre de la Galaxie, which actually translates out to Galaxy Warriors. And guess what? I have actually come across French versions of the Galaxy Warriors cards since my video on them, and and their French name was instead Le Invincible Galaxy, which translates out to The Invincible Galaxy. And I'm told by my good friend Julian that sounds just as awkward in French. Now, the actual second version of the card is the same, except the color scheme has been changed to orange. The names of the characters never appear on this one, and I've only seen them stamped by Madison. The third card changes the background completely to a spacey one with their Castle of Doom on it, which is something they advertise on the back of their earlier cards. Which, funny enough, this is the first card where they actually stopped showing it on the back because it never got released. These cards no longer have either the Suko or Madison stamp. They simply state made in Hong Kong. They do, however, have the same item number as the Suko stamped cards. The Madison ones had a completely different item number. Finally, the last card actually changes the fighter's logo from the copy of the Galaxy Warriors one, and to the side, the character Cobra is featured. Again, no manufacturer or distributor stamp, but they now read Made in China, though they still have the same item number. 
the fighters you could get during these different runs were also a bit different because only eight figures were featured at a time. So on the backs of these cards, you'd see certain characters disappear and be replaced by new ones. And of course, another interesting crossover between the Galaxy Warriors and Fighters line is four of the Galaxy Warriors were transported right into the Galaxy Fighters line. First, we have Anubi, who unlike his two most common versions in the Galaxy Warriors, has a head color that actually matches his body. But yes, I did just say most common because since my original Galaxy Warriors video, I have picked up a Galaxy Warrior Anubi who has a head color that matches his bodies. I didn't know for sure if this guy actually existed until I picked this one up. Like I've said, there really seems to be no end to the Galaxy Black Hole. There is still a difference though between the regular head color Galaxy Warrior Anubi and the Galaxy Fighter Anubi. Galaxy Warrior Anubi's head has been painted much like his dark head counterpart. But Galaxy Fighter Anubi's head is just the color of the plastic, which is like light head Galaxy Warrior Anubi. Next is Sawhack, who's actually called Cobra in the Fighter's line, but more on that in a sec. One of the interesting things here is Sawhack's slash Cobra is the only Galaxy Warrior moved into the fighter's line that has had a slight remold of their head skull. The neck has been shortened quite a bit, which does actually look a bit better on the Muscle Man body. Alright, Sawhack was the only one with an extensive remold of his head in the fighter's line because there are slight differences on Magnon as well. A couple of the details on the helmet have ever so slightly been altered, with this part now being more flush and the line coming off the back being shorter. And also there's a little bump on the top part of the helmet. But of course the biggest change on this character has been his hair color has changed from blonde to black. Maybe this was done to hopefully not piss off He-Man? And last, and certainly least, is Baltard. There's been absolutely no change with his head mold, so he's as perfect as ever. But Baltard! It is quite noticeable, though, that a Galaxy Fighter Baltard's hair is a much brighter red than any version of a Galaxy Warrior Baltard. Also, Baltard's, I guess, a bit more concerned with things, as his eyes are a bit wider. There are some versions of Galaxy Fighter Baltards where his eyes are quite doofy, and honestly, I kind of wish I'd gotten one of those, because that seems quite fitting for Baltard, but oh well. Actually, OMG Gasp, I'm a liar. Baltard has the biggest change ever. His hair tie is less de- Detailed. Also, look at Dayton Magnon Magoon whatever. He looks like he's the ugly brother of the Galaxy Warrior Magnon. So with these four Galaxy Warriors being released under the Galaxy Fighter line, it would almost make more sense that Suko was Sun Gold, and just in their later line, they decided to release four of their Galaxy Warriors again. However, Sun Gold still existed after the Galaxy Fighter's release. And when Sun Gold did later releases of their Galaxy Warriors mold, they did not have the changes that were present in the Galaxy Fighters line. The Galaxy Warriors in the Fighters line also had a strange thing going on with their names throughout all the different Galaxy Fighter releases. So first, there's absolutely no change on Magnon's name, but then with the orange version of the Galaxy Fighters cards, he became Magoon, before becoming Dayton on even later releases. And then instead, the name Magoon got given to this other character. Now with Baltard, he was still Baltard in the beginning, then by the version 2 card, he became Batoon. Then in the later cards, Baltard was just taken out of the line and replaced with a new character, which is an edit of Baltard, and they got the name Batoon. And Anubi was still a newbie in the beginning, then they modified it to a Nob, and then finally he became Walf. 
and the name Anob was given to this character. And finally, like I said before, Sawhack started off renamed to Cobra with a K, and then for some reason, even though this wasn't even an original Galaxy Warrior name, they modified it to Cobra with two A's. This would almost hint that there was some kind of problem with Sun Gold at some point, and they were forced to change these names. The second changing of the names comes off especially weird. It almost seems like maybe it was a mistake in this case, and the modified names of the Galaxy Warrior characters were supposed to stay on them, and the new names were actually to the new characters. So yeah, that's one of the spots where Galaxy Fighters is more confusing than Warriors, as some characters have three names, and one of their names is also the same name of a different character. So now we'll do the much more complicated Galaxy Fighters roll call. Magnon, Magoon, Dayton, Cobra, Cobra, Baltard, Batoon, or am I Batoon? Magoon, Anubi, Anob, Wealth, Iguana. Because he's an iguana. It's pretty creative. Mace A. Sunhawk. Anob. Uh, Center. Robic? Robic is the character I had to put an asterisk by saying that I had them all because I don't actually have Robic. Robic is the rarest of the galaxy fighters by far. I've never seen one of these figures for sale since I've been looking out for them. From what I can tell, part of the reason is Robic seems he was only released during the third version of the card, which also seems to be the rarest version of the card because I don't really see them come up. Robic replaced Mace Ape in this release, however in the next release they put Mace Ape back in and Robic was out. Also major thanks to fellow collector Rocklord for providing me some nicer picks of an actual Robic figure. Much like the Galaxy Warriors, the Galaxy Fighters also had a wrestling line based on their mold, and the Robic mold was reused in it. And since that was a figure I could actually get, I went with it. Alright, now let's go over the differences between a Galaxy Warrior and a Galaxy Fighter. Now where the Galaxy Warriors had that two types of boot thing going on, the Galaxy Fighters only have one type of boot. And they are all V-cut, but they're slightly different than a Galaxy Warrior V-cut boot. Also, they only have one type of gauntlet, which is the bumpy kind, and again, it's not quite the same as a Galaxy Warrior's bumpy kind gauntlet. Also, the design of the belt and trunks has changed slightly. On a Galaxy Fighter, you've got a diamond in the middle with stars going around, where on the Galaxy Warriors, it was just rectangles. Only the very last spot at the back on a Galaxy Fighter's belt is the same as a Warrior's. Now if you look closely, the furry trunks design on the Galaxy Fighter's is actually the same as the one on the Galaxy Warrior's, it's just an extra line has been added down the middle of each little piece coming off it. Giving these guys more detailed butts. Also, a disgusting naked Baltard party will be slightly different with a Galaxy Warrior versus a Galaxy Fighter. There's a little bit less muscle detail going on on the Galaxy Fighters versus the Warriors. And while the muscles still look fine on the front on the Galaxy Fighters, you'll notice a bigger difference with the back muscles. Because here it just looks like they barely even tried. I guess they just figured you're going to keep the harness on them all the time, and if you do take it off, you'll only be looking at them from the front? I don't know. But there are things in the sculpt that look like they have not really changed at all, like the lag muscles. The arm muscles, while having some spots that look very similar in the mold, again have become less detailed in spots, especially around the shoulder. And one of the more different changes on a Galaxy Fighter's body mold versus a Warrior's is the left hand. 
Where on the Galaxy Warriors it was more open like a Masters of the Universe figure, it's been changed to be more of a closed hand on a fighter. Meaning you can actually make your fighters left-handed if you want to. Though the left hand isn't quite as cupped in as the right, so you'll have to play with the balance a little bit if you do that. And of course the accessories have completely changed. Though strangely, on the back of the Galaxy Fighters card, it still does show some of their new drawings wearing the square and sun harnesses from the Galaxy Warriors. Also, Sunhawk and Baltard are holding that hooky scythe weapon from the Galaxy Warriors, which has no equivalent in the Galaxy Fighters. Galaxy Fighters have a very similar axe to the Galaxy Warriors one, though again, some of the details have changed and there's no longer a hook in the back. Both lines have a version of a long sword and a curved sword. Again, though, details slightly change from fighters to warriors. And then, I guess instead of a scythe, a unique spear was made. And this is not actually a Galaxy Fighters weapon. It's just from some third-party weapons pack made for Masters of the Universe-type figures. And my Cobra came holding it, so I've left it with him. But there's no mace for Mace Ape. You want to know why he's Mace? ape because he's got a ponytail mace in the back <laughs> what an idiot and my fuck mace ape is ugly isn't he like seriously he's yig ugly one of the kind of nice things about the new accessories on the galaxy fighters too is they very clearly separate who's a good guy and who's a bad guy all the good guys come with this bird type harness with the kind of feathered shoulders and all the bad guys have this circle designed v type harness the good and evil factions come with two different shield designs as well, with the V-type shields having a bigger design of either the skull or bird, and the smaller shields being a redesign of the Galaxy Warrior-type shields. So, Batoon's a kind of strange character. I mean this guy, we're gonna keep calling Baltard Baltard for simplicity's sake. But he's strange in the fact that he's a redesign of Baltard as a different character. Just, you chop off Baltard's top knot, round off his ears, and give him an eye patch, and then he's Batoon! Or you can still call Baltard Batoon, depending on how he's feeling that day in the Fighters universe. Also, the top knot has kind of been modified into a mohawk on Batoon. Why is it to me? I've killed myself! <laughs> I also don't understand why with Iguana they gave him the purple body when he's got a green head. Why didn't they go with the green body at least? And I also don't understand why I have three of him. But now that we're bringing up multiple of the same figure, guess what? There's versions of Galaxy Fighters, because of course there is! What seems to be only on the very earliest releases of Galaxy Fighters is a stamp on the leg for Suko, made in Hong Kong. Later releases, instead of having the stamp moved around or anything, just have no stamp on them whatsoever. I really don't know why some of them just have no marking on them. I do know it seems that Suko changed its name at some point, but the Baltard I got on the card that was still stamp Suko has no mark on it. And then there's Cobra, who just has a ridiculous amount of variants. Yes, I seriously have four of him, and not one of them is exactly the same as another. Now, of course, the most standout and what I think is the coolest variant is the dark green head and yellow eye Cobra. But then there's also this version of Cobra, who unlike all the other versions I've seen, does not have yellow detailing going down his neck. Also, there is a slight difference in the shade of green on his plastic, and different from what I guess I'll call the normal one, instead of having black eyes, he has light red eyes. And then my last version of Cobra has brown eyes! You'd almost think this is the same as the red eye version, but he does have the yellow detail on his neck, and his eyes are darker than the red eye one. Also, this Cobra's boots are noticeably darker than the other threes. The red and brown eye ones are also the only two with the Suko stamp on the leg. 
The other most notable variant is one of Magnon slash Dayton, where the cyanish blue on his helmet has been changed to red, and more parts of the helmet are now purple. There is also a long leg and arm variant of at least a few of the galaxy fighters. I've seen pictures of Magoon, Magnon, and Batoon like this. These different parts of their molds actually come from another Madison line of soldiers. I don't know if these were still released as galaxy fighters, I just know that they exist. A lot of the good guys in the galaxy fighter line are kind of generic. I mean, you got the copy of Magnon, but then you got a bunch of fucking assholes like Anob here. I mean, sure, he's an elf, I guess, but he looks like a fucking dick. Centurn's alright, but then you got Magoon. What the fuck? fuck is with him? I mean, he just looks so weird when you put him next to Magnon or someone. It, look at those eyes! Like, what the fuck did you see, man? Settle down! One of the things I sort of don't like in Galaxy Fighters is the selection for the good guy side. I mean, look at this. These are all human-type characters except for Macy. Well, and maybe Robic too. I don't know what the hell he was supposed to be in his actual galaxy fighter color scheme. And just look at the bad guy side. They're so much cooler, even with Baltard and his annoying half-brother Batoon tagging along. Yeah, I might be a little biased since, like I said, Sawhack slash Cobra and Anubi are my favorite characters in the galaxy universe. Also, I do really like the Iguana character, even if his head and body don't match. Maybe it's because they just kept adding a few characters as they went along, but they ended up with five bad guys and seven good guys. So, that doesn't seem fair. I mean, especially when I said I like the bad guys guys more. So I guess we'll even the odds here by adding all my Cobra variants. And you know what, I might as well throw in my two other iguanas as well. Oh yeah, and don't I have another Batoon? There we go. Actually, I might have made this a little uneven. I'll give the good guys my other Magnon. There we go. Galaxy Fighters are on par with the Masters of the Universe and the Galaxy Warriors figures. Their overall plastic quality feels the same as those two lines, they have the same articulation and the same rubber heads. Sure, in some spots they're slightly less detailed, but it's not really distractingly so. Also, the harnesses are actually nicer than the Galaxy Warriors ones, and it's nice they have shields that actually give them distinct sides to be on 10. Quite a few of the new characters in this line are kind of ugly, especially Maceape, but especially Anob. Also, what in the fuck is the real Robic? I at least understand the wrestler in the lucha mask. Also, the eyes on Magoon look pretty odd next to some of the other characters, but the Iguana character is cool. Except for his name simply being Iguana. And stupid disguised Baltard! You're not fooling anyone, Batoon! So really, there was quite a bit just ripped straight from the Galaxy Warriors here. Six. Of course, a lot of the weirdness in the Galaxy Fighters line is just trying to figure out its connection to the Galaxy Warriors. I'm pretty sure Sun Gold and Suko back then were laughing their asses off just imagining some internet jackass going insane trying to piece this together later on. The fact three of the characters had their original Galaxy Warriors names and then had those slightly modified then two of them got swapped again and the other had its head remolded is a nice and confusing mess. And it would seem to hint that Suko had an issue with Sun Gold at some point. 
But then you also have the apparent crossover series, Swords and Sorcerers, that use the Galaxy Warriors name and logo, but the fighter's card art. And apparently it included figures from both fighters and warriors. I'm just gonna stop trying to make sense of it. 10. As mentioned, the cards are very similar to the Galaxy Warriors ones and basically have the same logo least the text part. They also have the exact same bullet points written about the figures, though the first two are swapped. They're pretty cool cards and all the versions it has is interesting. 8. These, like the Galaxy Warriors since there's almost no difference, fit right in with all the Masters of the Universe type figures. 10. And the bootleg zones overall is 10! They're as nice as the Galaxy Warriors, and even though there are more characters in this line I don't like as well, it still included my favorites from the Warriors line, Anubi and Sawhack slash Cobra. Also, the accessories were really cool, and the confusing connection mystery kind of makes up for the characters I don't really like. <laughs> Doesn't matter what line we're in, Baltard, you're still the biggest loser on planet- Wait, what planet are we from now? I don't know! Fair enough.